Welcome to Occult Chronicles, Realms Unveiled, where the veils between reality and mysticism grow thin. Journey with us as we delve deep into the enigmatic worlds of magic, the occult, and witchcraft. Here, we unravel chilling tales where the arcane meets the real. Stories that aren't just mere folklore, but spine-tingling encounters from the shadows of everyday life. Blurring the lines between the tangible and the supernatural, we bring to you a blend of harrowing true crimes and tantalizing tales crafted by our very own, showcasing the mesmerizing yet perilous dance between the mystical and the mortal. So, light a candle, cast your protective circle, and let's unveil the realms that lie just beyond our comprehension. Prepare yourself, for once the unseen is seen, there's no turning back. Stay spellbound, and always tread with caution. Today, we have two tales about how everybody is somebody. And sometimes, it's just about the body. In the heart of London, there thrived the Allendales, a family shrouded in mystique, wealth, and whispers of witchcraft. The matriarch, Lady Morgana Allendale, was a woman of unparalleled beauty and ambition. Her allure passed on to her three daughters, Esmeralda, Celestia, and Aurora. Rumors persisted throughout London's high society that the Allendale women possessed dark and seductive powers. Men of influence and status would be reduced to mere shadows of themselves after falling for these women. But as much as the city feared them, it was equally captivated, unable to resist the pull of the Allendales. Seeking a grander stage, Morgana set her sights on America, dreaming of her family becoming the queens of reality TV. She envisioned their tale of British royalty, magic, and charm to be the perfect spell for American audiences. Upon arriving in the U.S., the Allendales quickly became a sensation. Their show, Alluring Allendales, showcased their luxurious lives, exotic rituals, and the enchanting relationships they wore. But as episodes aired, a disturbing pattern emerged. Jason, a renowned actor engaged to Esmeralda, began to show signs of manic paranoia. His once promising career crumbled as he claimed to see shadowy figures around every corner. <laughs> Meanwhile, Robert, a celebrated musician in love with Celestia, suddenly lost his gift. Notes that once flowed effortlessly now eluded him. His songs were placed with eerie tunes of lament. Viewers were hooked. They watched as these men became obsessed, devoted, and ultimately ruined. And as each man fell, the Allendales only grew more radiant, their power evident. As the series reached its climax, a brave journalist named Clara began to delve into the true nature of the Allendales. What she discovered sent chills down her spine. The Allendale women were not mere witches. They were succubi, <laughs> drawing life force and energy from the men they ensnared. Each relationship, each episode was a ritual in itself, allowing them to feed and grow stronger. Clara, exposed, was set to hit the screens, revealing the Allendale's dark truth. But on the eve of the broadcast, she mysteriously disappeared leaving behind only a cryptic note, Beware the Allure of the Dark. The show's final episode depicted a grand ball thrown by the Allendales. Men, now fully under their spell, danced like puppets, their eyes devoid of life. 
as the clock struck midnight, the Allendales gathered center stage, their eyes glowing in ethereal blue. With a harmonious chant, the ballroom's atmosphere thickened, shadows twisting and turning, and when dawn broke, the men were nowhere to be seen. America was left in a trance. The alluring Allendales disappeared from the screens, but their legend lived on, a haunting reminder of the intoxicating dance between allure and darkness, between desire and destruction. And now, let's explore the unholy pact of Dr. O'Malley and Mortician Marwick as we go into a deal with the damned. The town of Eldon Hollow was not particularly large, but its streets held secrets darker than the shadowy corners of its cobblestone alleys. Two of its residents, Dr. Tobias O'Malley and Mortician Lionel Marwick, formed an unholy alliance capitalizing on the most heinous of black market trades, selling human organs and body parts. Dr. O'Malley was respected surgeon at Eldon Hollow Hospital, and he had access to the unfortunate souls who met their untimely demise there. Meanwhile, Marwick, with his somber demeanor and a peculiar fondness for night, handled the town's deceased with an unsettling eagerness. Their clandestine operations ran smoothly. The doctor would provide the fresh specimens, and the mortician, with his network of shady contacts, would find eager buyers. But as time wore on, the town's residents began to notice odd occurrences. People who were hale and hearty would suddenly fall gravely ill, only to be pronounced dead under Dr. O'Malley's care. The town's population began dwindling, and a shadow of fear loomed. One late evening, Dr. O'Malley received an urgent call from Marwick, requesting his presence at the funeral parlor before a business proposition. And it couldn't wait till morning. Sensing an opportunity to expand their operations, the doctor made his way through the dense fog that had enveloped the town. The funeral parlor, with its gothic architecture, looked even more ominous at night. The large wooden door creaked open, revealing Marwick's silhouette, a flickering candle illuminating his gaunt face. Without a word, Marwick led O'Malley to the crematorium. As they stood facing the furnace, Marwick's voice changed, taking on a sinister, otherworldly tone. Do you ever wonder, Doctor, where the souls go? The ones you've taken so prematurely. Dr. O'Malley, sensing something was deeply amiss, tried to retreat, but an unseen force held him in place. The room grew colder, and Marwick's form began to shift, revealing his true demonic nature. His eyes glowed a fiery red, and an eerie grin spread across his face. You see, Doctor, Marwick hissed, I've been collecting souls for centuries, and I've been waiting for one just like yours. Before O'Malley could react, Marwick lunged, forcing the doctor into the open crematorium. The doctor slammed inside of the door, shut tightly, and you could hear the horrifying screams filling the room, echoing through the halls of the funeral parlor. By morning, the parlor stood silent, with no sign of either man. The dark dealings of Eldon Hollow came to an abrupt halt, but the tale of the doctor's gruesome end became a cautionary legend passing down through generations. And so, in hushed tones, parents would warn their children, Beware the company you keep and the dark paths you tread, for in Eldon Hollow, even the devil himself might be your business partner. As our journey through the dark corners of the mystical realm draws to a close, 
let's reflect on the tales that have unfurled before us. From the seductive snares of a family of witches, their allure masking their true nature as succubi, to the foreboding funeral parlor of Elden Hollow, where a mortician's dark ambitions consumed even those in the underworld of illicit dealings. We've navigated the treacherous waters where the ethereal meets the earthly. These stories remind us of the profound power of the unknown and the dangers that lurk when we meddle with forces beyond our comprehension. Whether born from the spirit world or the mind of a storyteller, these tales hold a mirror to our innate human curiosity and the risks we are willing to take in its pursuit. Thank you for unveiling these realms with us today. We'll continue our journey into the unknown in our next episode. Until then, tread lightly in the world of magic, for the line between the mystical and the mortal is ever so delicate. Good night, seekers of the unknown. May your dreams remain unhaunted.